All right, back again. BQ here. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to talk tonight's Slam Reversary show. I'll give you uh, my predictions for what's going to happen. I'm very often wrong with these type of things, but that's a fun thing. We don't want to be. We we don't want it to be too obvious. I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to go over the betting odds as well. Unfortunately, here in Las Vegas, I can't bet, um, which is weird, right? Uh, there's there's a couple sports books that you can get involved with, but you got to go in and sign up, and it's a it's a huge pain in the ass. So um, I can't go on like points bet and just bet, unfortunately, because I would clean up on wrestling. I promise you, I do very well on a uh, when I was in Illinois betting on WWE. I did pretty well with there, but uh, so we're get, we're gonna go over that a little bit as well. Not every single match has betting odds. It's a uh, the TNA World Championship match, the Knockouts Championship match, the X Division Championship, uh, PCO versus AJ Francis, and that's it. So, um, yeah, that is that is it. We'll go over a potential parlay we could probably put together here. No, because these are... Uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, let's go over the card first. Now... Let's talk Slammiversary as far as the build up to this point. And I've said that I was very disappointed. I think most people were with the build. They had a very good go-home show where a lot happened. But, you know, I, you guys have heard me for years with the TNA Plus shows going, yo, they're going too hard on TNA Plus. They're defending every single title when it's not necessary. And the couple TNA Plus shows they've had this year, especially the one after Hard to Kill, it seemed like they put all their effort into those, into putting those cards together, and even the creative forum. And then the, the pay-per-view rolls around, and it's like, we have no energy left. And that's how, the, this, that's how this entire build came off. Again, they had a very good go-home show. A lot happened. They did a very good job of you know, eliciting emotion and, and, uh, and, and building some heat and getting people pissed off and... Uh, you know, ready to rip their opponents' heads off. And the fans were into it, but overall, the buzz for the Slam anniversary is the lowest I think it's been in in probably five or six years. And the reason it's not in the shitter is because the TNA fan base is very excited about the sellout of a four thousand people. They're very excited for that. We've been, you know, waiting to see a, a much larger crowd because even as good as Hard to Kill and Rebellion came off on TV, we're still talking about. 1800 people right is that what we're saying 1800 maybe 2000 you know um we're, we're to, this is more than double the crowd it's going to look like the early episodes of rampage of aw rampage when that show was good for like two weeks uh to where they had very large crowds because i, I went to one of those shows and it was about 5,000 people there in in an arena in st louis and you know it's 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 damn near an arena sized crowd if you put it in the right venue, uh, in, not not too big of a venue obviously, but uh, people are very excited for the crowd. They're excited for how it's going to come off on TV. But they, have they done enough enough up to this point to where people want to spend the money to buy the pay per view? You know, it just always seems like um, it's one or the other. We're either going to get the build or the crowd. But I I really stand by what I said that. The, the TNA Plus shows this year, they went entirely too hard on them. And then the Slammiversary rolls around. It's like, shit, I, I'm not sure what to do. So the card is super freaking thrown together. Now, they did enough on this past episode to justify a couple of these matches that otherwise would have looked very, very random. But um, I, I think it just started from the top. When we got the world championship match and it's going to be a six way and you know there's some people who like those kind of matches but then there's some people who say okay so we're just we're just going to throw everyone together in one match instead of building individual storylines and a real storyline for this title we're just we're just going to throw them all together you know so the, i think the writing on was on the wall kind of early i do think and i, I i'm not trying to sound or, overly negative here i think this is the worst anniversary card they put together in years that being said, I'm always very confident that Slam Reversary is going to be a good show. I'm always very confident that the pay-per-views are going to be good. No matter who's on them, 
they deliver. They always deliver. There's always going to be one match on there, one or two, and it usually involves PCO, one or two other names on here that once they're on the card, it's too much. It's overbooked and there's all this shit going on. There's always going to be one of those. Uh, I think it was, I think it was Rebellion where the, 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 the show was almost perfect until the Steph Delander Jordan Grace match to where Sammy Callahan showed up and all these dudes and just everyone was just showing up and PCO and all sorts of fucking bullshit. And by the end of it, it was like, what the hell is this? There's going to be one of those shows because there's oh, I mean, one of those matches because there was always an overbooked match on a TNA pay-per-view nine times out of nine. All right. So uh, we'll see. It'll, it'll probably be AJ versus PCO, um, but we'll, we will see. Now, Jordan Grace said there's going to be surprises at this. They've, they've always for Slamversary said, Hey, who's showing up? There's going to be, there's going to be surprises. They've, they've been doing this for several years now. Really a lot of the TNA pay-per-views they've been saying someone is showing up, but, but I would argue that they have, they've, they've been underwhelming surprises. Even, even the Slammiversary where uh, they were teasing the very first one, uh, pre, uh, post pandemic where they were teasing, all these people fire from WWE and who's going to show up. You know, this is the one Eric Young ended up coming to an EC3 for his one match. And, and uh, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. It was, it was underwhelming. Their surprises, even though they're fun, because we like surprises have been underwhelming. You know, Scott Demore said, okay, one of the biggest signings in TNA history. And it really got people's gears turning like, wow, well, can't be Nick Nemeth because it's you're, you're, he's comparing it to Kurt Angle and things like that, you know, and they end up being Nick Nemeth and he's not even signed. But I, I really would argue that majority of the surprises are a little, while fun, they're underwhelming as far as who it is. And the TNA fan base has started, started retracting on these surprises because they might be someone showing it up, showing up at a show like Jeff Hardy recently, but they're not signed. They're still free agents. They're still, and the TNA fan base does not like that. They want people signed who are going to be around so that they can get interested in them. The you know right now the TNA business model is hey we can't afford these guys we're going to bring them in for short term. I'm just saying the fan base doesn't like it. They've never liked it because a lot of the TNA fan base only watches TNA. You know at, at one point when I broke off I didn't break off but when I started watching AEW it's because I said you know I, I kind of. I desire a wrestling, a live show in front of a lot of people. You know, I, I kind of needed to scratch that itch. So I started watching it because I wasn't quite being fulfilled only watching TNA, which was a tased, taped program in front of a small audience. You know, I wasn't quite fulfilled from a wrestling fan standpoint. Uh, I mean, AEW is so bad now that I'm, I'm perfectly content just watching TNA and NWA. But I'm just saying at the time. So for a lot of wrestling fans... They can't just watch one small wrestling pro, uh, company, but a lot of TNA fans do. That that is, <laughs> it, it's tough to be one of those people, but because a lot of those TNA fans are those type of people, they're more invested in. Okay, when I see someone on my screen, I want them here long term. If you're someone who watches WWE, AEW, and then TNA, you don't really give a shit. Okay, Nick Nemeth's around for six months or. I mean, I'm just throwing a name out there. This person's around for half a year. This person's around for a year. You don't really care if TNA is a, isn't the main show you watch. But when it is, it pisses you off. So I know I'm going off quite a while here, but Jordan Grace has some really hot takes on Twitter. I don't really trust her. <laughs> and I, I say that with all due respect. Trust me. because. I, I said this is the greatest, going to be the greatest knockout ever. But she has some hot takes on Twitter. You know, she got people talking about a NXT and TNA pay per view. I, I promise you, that's never going to happen. You know, but she she gets people worked up and fired up, and she say, "Oh, you're, you're not going to believe who's going to show up." They say they say that all the time. You won't believe who it is. The worlds change, worlds collide, all this shit, and it, it's it's nothing. You know what I mean? It's nothing to get overly excited about is what i'm saying so now that i've uh gone through all that you know if some people show up awesome i'm not expecting it personally 
even if it is, I don't even know who it, who it could possibly be that would be that big of a deal. Unless it was someone crossing over from uh, the WWE main roster, I don't see anything that's that's very exciting. If if it's like Ethan Page, okay, maybe the fans. I mean, the wrestlers backstage at TNA, like, ooh, the NXT champion showing up. Ooh. The fans don't give a fucking shit if that's who's on screen, you know. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, folks. Countdown to Slam Anniversary. We're getting, I mean, one of the most random matches that I've ever seen. Tasha Steeles versus Fabi Apache versus Giselle Shaw versus Zaya Brookside. This is, we need to get everyone on the card. And then the random girl in the headdress. Fabi Apache has been on the show several times over the years, but this is, this is so random. It's not a number one contenders match. Nothing. It just... Let's get all these girls wrestling. Giselle Shaw is going to win because she's on her road to Bound for Glory. I stand by what I say. She's going to beat Jordan at Bound for Glory, and then Jordan will ride off into the sunset. Next countdown match, we've got Kushida versus Jonathan Gresham. Last week, they did this three-way where Mike Bailey had to beat them to be the number one contender for the X Division Championship. We knew Mike Bailey was going to win. This was just a way to kind of Further, Kushida, who's searching for the cure, and Jonathan Gresham. So, uh, had this been done right, this probably could have been on the main card. But it's a countdown match. And uh, Kushida will win. Slammiversary countdown continues with the Knockouts Tag Team Championship. This wasn't initially on the countdown, I don't think. But it's uh, Masha Slamovich and Alicia Edwards versus... Uh, Spitfire. Uh, my money is on the uh, the militia to, to retain. I initially thought that Jody Threat and Danny Luna would win because of this weird storyline they got going on. But when you release a brand new T-shirt the, a couple days before Slammiversary, I, I think it's safe to say that uh, Mosh and Alicia win. Did I say we have betting odds on this match? Tag, TNA tag? Uh, no, we do not for that. Okay, let's get back to the card. Uh, Matt Hardy taking on Johnny Dango Curtis. This probably should have been on the pre. There's a couple matches that should have been on the pre-show here, but what? It's whatever. Uh, I say that, but if it's a pre-show, it's the pay-per-view. I'm not one of those people that think they're they're uh, fucking pay-per-view. The only difference is I think the pre-show is usually free. And I don't think that these matches are going to get people to buy Slammiversary. As far as the knockouts tag team titles, this random knockouts match and Kushida versus Gresham that may or may not be bad because of the ink. The wrestling will be fine, but the ink, they're probably going to have the goof ref. I don't know if it's going to do a whole lot. I think Mike Santana versus Jake something would have done more and that even though mike deserves to be on the main card i think that would have done more on the pre-show to get people to order but whatever it's a weird strategy because you have to have matches that people care about but you don't want to they, they can't be too good so matt hardy's taking on johnny dango curtis they've done a very good job of building heat with dango they've done more with him over the last three weeks four weeks and they've done in a year and a half with him in the company They've tried a few different things. Nothing really stuck. Uh, this is working for him. This is working. I actually have Dango winning this match versus Matt Hardy. I don't know how good it's going to be, but I got Dango winning. Mike Santana takes on Jake something. Uh, this is this is a huge step down for what Mike Santana should be doing on this on this show. I think they bumped into each other backstage on Twitter on a digital exclusive. So that's what led to this match here. Jake something, it always seems like the push is coming and then there's no push. And then are we getting, you know, they invested weeks of television into a potential heel turn and then he's doing nothing on this show. I say nothing because he's just wrestling on a random match. That's what I'm talking about, them building the TNA Plus shows and or, or just even building storylines that have nothing to do with anything that no one really cares about putting so much effort into it, and then Slammiversary rolls around. It's like, whoops, what do we do? 
And I don't think they were ready to turn Jake something heel, but they had him wrestle Joe Hendry the other day and he got booed and people cheered Joe Hendry. So now he's a heel. He, he got no freaking choice now. That, that completely cut that story off. He didn't need to turn on Diener or anything like that. They just, he's a heel. So I got Mike Santana winning this thing and um, just, just another loss for Jake something. But Mike Santana is going to win. They've made it very, very clear that he's Moose's next opponent. They made it clear Moose is going to win the match of Slammiversary because he's afraid of Mike Santana for whatever reason. They've they've telegraphed all of these things. The Rascals, and this has we got Wes Lee here. They're taking on the no no quarter catch crew from uh, from NXT. Charlie Dempsey, who I call Patrick Dempsey, uh, Miles Bourne, and Tavion Heights. These fucking names, man. Uh, it's a TNA pay-per-view. I'm going to assume the Rascals win because the no-quarter catch crew run on, won on the episode of Impact. So if no-quarter catch crew wins here, then they're going to further this partnership as far as these particular guys showing up on the show. But I do think that TNA has learned from its ways a little bit with the partnership with AEW. And they gave no quarter catch crew their win on TV. I think the Rascals got this. All right. The prestigious TNA Digital Media Championship is up for grabs. AJ Francis versus PCO. This this likely is the worst gonna be the worst card on the show. Excuse me. <laughs> worst worst card on the show. Card and show are pretty much the same thing. The worst match on the card. Worst match on the show is most likely gonna be this. There is a a high probability that this is overbooked to hell. You might see Rich Swan out there. You might see, they might even change the stipulation to a street fight or some shit. You're going to see Rich Swan. You might see Steph Delander. You might see uh, freaking uh, Matt Cardona. You might see Mance Warner for all we know. I think this is going to be a complete shit show, this match right here. This has betting odds. This has PCO favored to win. Um, at minus 500. So when it says minus 500, that means uh, if you bet $500, you can win 100. So um, they got PCO at, at minus 500, AJ Francis at, at plus 300. What the plus means is that if you bet $100, you'll win $300. <laughs> so follow me here, okay? So PCO minus 500. That means you have to bet 500 to win 100. Because he's favored. AJ Francis is the underdog at plus 300. That means if you bet 100, you win 300. If you bet 10, you win 30. So it has uh, PCO pretty favorably, pretty heavily favored to win. Uh, a negative a minus 500 odds um if it's if it's like minus 250 minus 300 type of thing that is more that's a little more even like we're not totally sure who's gonna win here but but minus 500 is pretty they they feel pco is gonna win this is the this is the match here that i would bet the underdog on aj francis i know that they're in Canada and they got to appease the people. But can you imagine PCO is the digital media champion when AJ Francis seems like he can do a lot with that belt and he's doing a lot, you know, and he has it, but he does have this other belt. Could that be recognized as a legit mid card title here in TNA at some point? I don't know. I personally, if I had to make a, a bet here, I, I would probably bet the underdog AJ Francis. That just that's just me. Then we have Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards versus Ace Austin and Chris Bay. This is to me a very underwhelming tag team championship match because we've already seen it. I I'm all for rematches uh, for dragging a rematch out instead of giving it to us the next night. But this should have done this should have been on TV. This is the problem they ran into being in Canada because if this was the system versus uh, the Hardys, get out of here. If it was the system versus the Nemeth brothers or the Hardys, 
I think this would have been huge. I still would have had the Nemeth brothers here, personally. They gave us that match already. And I know that Ryan Nemeth isn't very good, but this would have been a much bigger deal, I think, if, if that was the match. Ace Austin and Chris Bay are, have barely been on TV. They had this weird angle where they were possibly splitting up. I think they might have retracted on that. I don't really know, but um, I just I think there's zero buzz behind this match. I am going to go with uh, the system retaining, though. I think it would be extremely bland if the ABC were to win. This might be what breaks the ABC up, but I think it would be very, very bland of them to win. Oh, you know, and and to go back to the uh, AJ Francis match, I also mentioned that I think they're looking at a new member of uh, first class, and I and I I know who it is that they're looking at, so that's another person who can get involved here. So I don't know. There's so many possibilities. Stefan Lander might screw PCO. I don't know. Anyway, let's go back to what I was just saying. The uh, tag team championship match. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the system. So we got betting odds on them. Actually, no. Okay. These these bet these bets, by the way, are bet are um, bet online. So if you're trying to to bet on uh, Slam Anniversary, it is on Bet Online. I'm actually surprised they don't have betting odds on that. Maybe they don't even care. Vegas does not even care about this match. All right, TNA X Division Champion Mustafa Ali versus Mike Bailey. I'm going to go to the betting odds first before I make a prediction here. They got so they got Mike Bailey at minus 300 and Mustafa Ali at plus 200. That's pretty even. It's is it's as close as you can get to being even without actually being even. So they think Mike Bailey is going to win. Um I'm going to go with Mike Bailey. Because I don't think PCO is going to win. And I don't think the the way that they pr- uh, promoted this show, I don't think they're going to have both of the uh, the local guys lose. So I think Mike Bailey is going to win. Mustafa Ali is an excellent X Division champion. Excellent. Does he need the title for this gimmick? I don't know. Can he? Is he going to be done after this? I hope not because he is the most entertaining part about the show. He can continue this gimmick on for the next two years. And he he throws so many constant wrinkles and changes into it. That's why I used Steve Macklin as an example. Is I wish he would have had a security detail when he was a champion. I think adding that and then having campaign saying there's just so many directions it can continue to go. Now, that being said, maybe they say, okay, he's really elevated the X Division Championship, which he has. The exhibition, the, the 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 division is no good. If you look at the actual division, no contenders in there. It's only Bailey and Ali. So that's why Ali works. But who's he going to fight after this if, if there's no Mike Bailey? So I, I think it's going to be Mike Bailey, and I think they're going to have a rematch. And then either Ali will be done, or they're going to try to elevate him up the card a little bit. Can you imagine an, uh, a storyline with Mustafa Ali and Josh Alexander? That's why I was saying find something interesting for Josh Alexander to do. Like this would bring out personality and, and, you know, out of Josh and Ali is just everything he's touching is gold. So get Josh Alexander involved with this dude. The match would be incredible, but there's so much personality involved with Mustafa Ali and it's the the line storylines are so creative and there's just, I mean, shit. I just think. You take someone, Josh Alexander, who's supposed to be your top guy, but he's kind of bland, and you throw him in with Ali, and you can have some like real magic there that you can really build to something extremely special. So we'll see what they do. Uh, but again, betting odds is Mike Bailey, minus 300, meaning if you bet 300, you'll win 100. Mustafa Ali, plus 200, meaning if you uh, bet 100, you'll win 200. So this one is very, very even, but I'm going to say Mike Bailey um, is going to win. Then, I'm sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> Knockouts, the, the who gives a shit match is Jordan Grace versus Ash by Awful Sauce. 
Jordan Grace is going to win this match. I, I mean, I would have said three months ago that Ash was going to win. But because on paper, Ash is very athletic. Like, she should have the gifts. But it's not clicking. It's not there. And as I've, I've said many times over, over the last couple weeks, maybe longer than that, I think this is Ash's last match in the company. I don't know if she's signed. I really have no idea. I have to preface with that. I have no clue if she is signed long term. I don't have a clue in hell. I just see the writing on the wall that this has been very bad. And they were building towards this match. But I, I just wouldn't be shocked if TNA didn't cut bait after this. They're kind of almost acting like Rosemary might write off the personal concierge on screen. You know, he might she might chase him out of the arena and we don't we never see him again. But I, I would be so shocked if Ash won this match. Let's go to the betting odds. They've got Jordan Grace at minus 2,000. This is... So that... Minus 2,000 means you bet $2,000 on this to win 100 bucks. That is how confident Vegas is that Jordan Grace is going to win. Try Elegance is plus 700, meaning if you bet 100, you'll win 700. So if you if you want to take a real chance, you bet a hundred bucks on Ash by Elegance, or you bet ten bucks and win seventy. I don't think Ash is going to win. I think at this point she's proven she'd be a pretty poor champion. I don't think the gimmick has worked. I was all for it when it happened. I wanted to see it grow, and I think that they made the the burn so slow because they clearly wanted to say, "Hey, let's let's build this thing out to anniversary," that it just fizzled out. And I stand by what I said. They had a couple opportunities for Ash to knock Jordan Grace out cold. Ash should have put Jordan Grace in the fucking hospital. Instead of Jordan Grace these last two episodes cutting promos and while Ash is on vacation, quote unquote, Ash should have went on vacation because there's no match at Slammiversary. That she whipped her ass. That's why she should be on vacation. And, and we should be watching clips of Jordan with the phony doctor inside the hospital. But they're keeping Jordan strong because she was on NXT and WWE. So I don't know. I, I feel like Ash by Elgin signed a six month contract and she's done. So Jordan Grace, again, Vegas is very, very confident she's going to win here and minus 200 odds. TNA world champion Moose versus Joe Hendry versus Frankie Kazarian versus Nick Nemeth versus Josh Alexander versus Steve McLean. So uh, I'm very confident Moose is going to win here. I am confident because he has already told us he didn't want Santana in this match. Moose isn't going to lose the title and then do a program with Mike Santana. So uh, Moose is going to win this thing. I've, I've spoken enough about that. I, I, I'm disappointed how they threw all this together. Everyone in one match, making it a elimination match where five of your top people are going to lose. Um, and then Joe Hendry, I think it's very clear that the bottom two are going to be Moose and Joe Hendry. I think that's very, very clear. And then Joe Hendry, they might move him to one-on-one -on -one for a bound for glory versus Moose. Or if I know TNA and I do, they'll probably be on a, a TNA plus show. So they're probably gonna do Moose versus Santana on TNA plus and then Moose versus Joe Hendry on TNA plus and then bound for glory is going to roll around and be like, Oh, we don't have a world title match. That's why I always say stop defending every single title on these damn shows. Main event it with the X Division Championship or the Tag Team Championship and give the world champion a break and build their stories and their angles. I wouldn't be shocked, actually, if Bound for Glory wasn't Moose versus Joe Hendry versus Mike Santana on a three-way. That's kind of what I think. I think that's the direction they're going to go. And I, I could be so fucking wrong on that. But that's, to me, what makes sense. I think they're going to do a multi another multi-person match, and it's going to be those three. Hendry might win there. But I also think the company might be looking at this and saying, well, Joe Hendry doesn't need the title. I can see that being a thing, too. I can see Joe Hendry being a champion and fizzling out very quickly as well. There, this is If there's ever a wrestler that you can see fans getting behind for the, 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 uh, the chase and then... Kind of saying, okay, he's corny once he's the champion. It's Joe Hendry. That's it's very much a possibility. So I got, I definitely have Moose winning this thing. 
betting odds also likes Moose at minus 1,000, which is also a lot. That's uh, Jordan Grace is, is, is the one that Vegas is very confident in. Moose is second. So minus 1,000 uh, 1, means you need to bet $1,000 to make 100. Joe Hendry is next at pl- plus 500 odds, meaning bet 100 to get 500. Josh Alexander is at plus 1,000, meaning bet 100 to get 1,000. Nick Nemeth is also at 1,000, so bet 100 to get 1,000. Stick, uh, I said stick because I looked at Nick. Steve Macklin, Steve McLean. 1200 plus 1200 meaning bet 100 to get 12 and then Frankie Gazarian dead last at plus 1400 uh, bet 100 to get 1400 they're going to build Frankie Gazarian versus Nick Nemeth from this match that's what that's exactly what's going to happen so neither of those dudes are winning i'm actually shocked that Nick Nemeth has better odds than Steve McLean <laughs> now i'm just calling him Steve McLean Steve Macklin um they've been teasing if you haven't paid attention especially the contract signing that Josh Alexander and Steve Macklin, like they're going to revisit that they've been, they've been looking at each other. So I think they're going to break off and try to give us another Macklin versus Josh Alexander angle where I said, I think the money is in Josh Alexander and Mustafa Ali. I think they could find something to really, uh, really charge up Josh Alexander's character. If they did that revisiting something with Steve Macklin, I'm not so sure. With Macklin, they're always teasing. He's going baby face, whatever. I don't know what the hell they're doing with him. But they're they're definitely um, Moose and Joe Hendry are gonna be the bottom two in this match. I don't even know. We're just gonna watch a long match for those two to be there in the end, and Joe Hendry likely to get screwed in the end. I would be. I mean, it would make sense that Joe Hendry takes the world title on NXT, but he's feuding with jobbers on NXT right now. All right, I think it's called they're called Don Callis or something. Their team. He's feuding with jobbers. So don't even don't even trip on that, folks. Moose is going to be your guy. So th- that's it for me, guys. That's what going to happen with Slammiversary. I'm not my fingers are not crossed about some some major uh, debut or surprise. I mean, I'm sure we're going to see one or two people, but you know, Jordan Grace getting on there. Oh, there's going to be more people than you expect or bigger surprises than you expect. I don't know who could be again. Uh, if it's not someone from the WWE main roster, there's no one on the NXT roster that the, the fans would lose their minds over. Now, if Jordan Grace is the one saying it, then it, if, if it's anybody, it's probably a chick. And the only chick that, makes sense is if Roxanne Perez shows up again and says, okay, now I want to wrestle you for your title at Bound for Glory. If that happens, that's a big deal. And that throws a wrench in what some people think Jordan uh, Grace's career trajectory is in TNA. How long she is sticking around or when maybe she's leaving or whatever, you know? So that's going to be very telling. But if Jordan Grace is the one hyping this thing up, it probably has to do with the chicks. Uh, the other one that would be fun, even though it wouldn't make a lot of buzz, is if uh, Ariana Grace showed up, which is Santino's daughter. If she was involved, that would be very cool uh, because you can actually get Santino involved in a storyline and maybe more of a he, more of a serious character for him. Maybe he turns heel a little bit. I'm totally fantasy booking here. Uh, usually when you fantasy book, those those things don't happen. But I'm just saying the possibilities are there to do something like that. And um, yeah, Ariana Grace, she's uh, for me like top five wrestling females I've met in my life that are better looking in person than on screen. Like she's she's top five, maybe top three. Um, but I do think that that is kind of my prediction is that it'll be a chick. If Jordan Grace is talking about it, it'll be a chick. So, but there's, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's going to do it for my Slammiversary preview, folks. I'll be reviewing Slammiversary after the show. I'm out. Peace.